Welcome to the channel, guys. Today, we discuss what we learned from the SpaceX Starship test flight. The third test flight will be our main focus. We will go over what happened during the pre-launch phase of the Starship, the launch phase, the challenges faced during launch, the re-entry phase, and if this mission was a success. Starship on its third flight in March 2024 aced the launch and ascent, reaching orbital velocity for the first time. However, during re-entry, the intense heat and pressure caused Starship to break apart. While a landing wasn't achieved, valuable data was collected for future improvements. During its third integrated flight test, Starship demonstrated remarkable performance in all areas. Nonetheless, like any complicated mission, there were some things that didn't go according to plan. Let's take a closer look at the mission. We'll begin with the pre-launch phase. So how do you think SpaceX starts of its pre-launch phase? One thing we learned about how SpaceX operates is that, to commence their flight mission, they start with the installation of the flight termination system charges on the Starship Flight 3 vehicle. The purpose of the system is to demolish the rocket while it is in flight by setting off an explosion in the event that the launch vehicle loses control after liftoff. After mounting the charges and arming them, the flight team starts the final round of inspections on the Starship and the booster before putting them together. After all system checks and inspections were finished, the Starship was lifted and stacked atop the booster. After mounting the Starship, the process is followed by water deluge and detonation suppression system tests to ensure their flawless operation on the launch day. Those tests essentially mark the end of all major system checks in preparation for Flight 3. However, prior to launch, the FAA carried out a tiered environmental assessment to examine the potential environmental impacts of a Starship re-entry and ground landing in the Indian Ocean. SpaceX was given the go-ahead for 10 launches after obtaining the license, after which SpaceX began the final stage of launch preparations. The fueling stage is the last stage of the pre-launch phase. Fast and seamless fuel loading this time was made possible by the recently installed heat exchangers and pumps at the tank farm. In less than 50 minutes, the launch vehicle was loaded with 4,600 tons of liquid oxygen and propellant, marking a significant improvement over the nearly 90 minutes needed during previous missions. And now, we move on to the launch phase. The countdown sequence is initiated by the onboard computer at 10 seconds. The water under the launch mount started to flow thanks to the deluge system. At the T-minus 3 second mark, the Raptor started up and the engine ignited. With a powerful roar, the Starship launched from the launch pad and started its space voyage. It was an amazing sight. The spacecraft continued to ascend, and during liftoff and ascent, none of the booster engines malfunctioned. The rocket also reached maximum aerodynamic pressure and exceeded the speed of sound. Similar to the first two flights, multiple thermal protection system tiles separated from the ship during the ascent 52 seconds after liftoff. SpaceX must promptly address the tile issue and find a workable solution, as this will greatly affect the Starship's ability to withstand the heat during flight and re-entry. With the exception of the inner three, all of the booster engines shut off as intended two minutes and 42 seconds after liftoff. After seven seconds, Ship 28 fired up all six engines and detachment from the booster stage went off without a hitch, demonstrating the Starship's hot stage separation system once more. It was a perfect operation following a quick flip maneuver, in which the booster successfully fired its inner 10 engines for boost back burst and started its journey back to Earth. But then, the booster faced a few challenges. You're probably thinking, what challenges? Well, the booster was able to ignite multiple engines for its landing burn. But as it passed through the denser areas of the atmosphere, it began to lose control and tumble. SpaceX reports that the booster flight ended at an altitude of about 144 kilometers. The Starship continued its mission for less than 7 minutes, and at T plus 8 minutes and 35 seconds, all six engines shut off, putting the vehicle into a coast phase in space. Not only that, as scheduled, the ship opened its payload bay 11 minutes and 56 seconds into the mission. A few minutes later, a visual inside the payload bay revealed the door in the open position. Afterwards, a command was given for the door to close. But based on the visuals, it appears that something went wrong and prevented the door from properly closing. Moving on, we learned that SpaceX aimed to not just take the Starship out in orbit, 
it aimed to achieve a few milestones. What do you think these milestones were? One significant milestone was the propellant transfer demonstration, which involved transferring 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen between the main tank and the header tank while the ship was coasting. SpaceX plans to perform ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer demonstrations between two starships connected in low Earth orbit during the upcoming flight tests. SpaceX confirmed the success of this milestone, marking a significant accomplishment for the mission. NASA and SpaceX will receive essential data from these demonstration missions to advance propellant transfer technology, which is essential for the agency's aspirations. Another milestone which SpaceX had originally intended to perform was a quick relight of a Raptor engine on Starship about 40 minutes after liftoff. However, this planned engine ignition was skipped due to high vehicle roll rates observed during the coast phase. The purpose of the planned relighting test was to prepare for the future when ships will need to restart their engines multiple times to perform deorbit and landing maneuvers, enter lunar or Mars orbit, and correct trajectory. Future missions will include Raptor reignition tests to collect important data to enhance the engine design. Now, it's time for the re-entry phase. The Starship started re-entering Earth's atmosphere 44 minutes after liftoff, nearly five minutes earlier than scheduled. The Starship lost several heat tiles during this part of the flight as it gradually descended into Earth's atmosphere and plasma started to envelop it due to the intense heat generated by air friction. Starlink satellites transmitted dramatic images of the re-entry captured by a camera fixed on the vehicle's flap. SpaceX lost contact with the vehicle during the final descent phase, leading to the conclusion that the vehicle may not have survived the re-entry and may have broken up in the atmosphere. Based on the visuals, it appears that the ship lost altitude control during the re-entry phase, resulting in uncontrolled spinning, but the ship survived almost all the way through re-entry. Signal loss occurred as intense plasma formed around the ship during its descent through the thickest part of the atmosphere. Therefore, in order to find out exactly what went wrong and what happened to the Starship, we will have to wait for an official statement from SpaceX following the post-flight data review. Compared to the first two flight tests, Starship Flight 3 was a huge success, despite not reaching all of its milestones. The FAA acknowledged the mishap and announced that they would oversee a thorough investigation led by SpaceX approximately an hour after the mission ended. In contrast to the previous missions, which were suborbital, Elon Musk announced that SpaceX is aiming for six more Starship flights this year. Based on current developments, these upcoming flights are anticipated to be orbital. SpaceX will have plenty of opportunity to collect vital data from the increased launch frequency, allowing for ongoing improvements to the Starship design over time. So was this flight a success? Ultimately, in our books, this test flight was a huge success, and SpaceX thinks so too. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.